Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included Clay Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are back in Twitchy's Tremendous Trojan. We're going to start this episode the same way we start almost every episode by having a quick look around the base and making sure everything's working a okay. We got the three, the triple, and natural gas geysers ticking over and making power for my base. Yeah, I just wanted to see if I could get a smart battery on the go, but it turns out we need all sorts of re. Uh, find materials for that. So we're going to start working on things like that. The other thing I want to do is try and get the temperature down in my water. Funnily enough, what, what a crazy thing that this is something we need to do all the time. Literally every episode I think we're going to be looking at this water, trying to see if there's a way we can speed up the chilling process. Now obviously they, there is the um, thermo aqua tuner, but I'd rather do it in a more of a passive manner. That's why I've got wheeze warts and doing it inside the uh, ice biome there. So that should work out a-okay. Waiting for the time where I can dump that second tank's worth of water in. Uh, I'm getting a little bit worried because everything's starting to back up a little bit and maybe we've not, have not got enough room. So, talking about those refined materials, one of the ones that I needed to get for all the advanced buildings out there is plastics. And the best way to get plastics, or indeed the only way to get plastics, or at least as far as I know, I might have misspoken there, this might not be the only way, but the only way that I know about is to refine oil into petroleum and then send the petroleum into a plastic press. So, that's what I'm going to hollow out here, a little bit of a work area. We're going to be following ZTech around because he, of course, is the man that has most of the uh, relevant jobs and priorities put down here. I believe Captain Sub's also uh, one of those people, but as I say that, ZTech totally going and proving me wrong here by going and dealing with the food for some reason. I, I'm not entirely certain what was going on with that. Uh, having a quick look, I noticed that the plastic manufacturing research had not actually been done, so definitely had to put that on. We're going to have a nice little uh, meal time with all our dupes together here. I'm going to spend a little bit of time making sure the base is some sort of tidy uh, operation here. We have two objectives for tomorrow. The first one is to make sure that that oil refinery is up and running, has got all the infrastructure around it that it needs. Now, the oil refinery takes in pure oil, if you will, and outputs petroleum. Those are both via pipes, but as it seems to be the way with a lot of these machines, it also just dumps a bunch of natural gas to its environment, a waste product to its environment. So I need to set up a pumping mechanism here with some sort of filter in place and things like that, so that should work out pretty well and just work passively for us. I'm all about the passive systems that just work in the background without any need for decision making uh, going down. The other thing that I want to do is try and find my some more wheeze warts. Yes, indeed. There's a lot of this map that has not been explored yet, and there's a lot of water that I need to chill very quickly. So I feel that the power of the wheeze wart is going to be the winner there. Watching the beauties of my natural gas power generation ticking over there, and I decide that maybe it's time to uh, bite the bullet and raise the temperature on the thermo sensor to let slightly warmer water go through. It looks hot on the temperature overlay, but actually, technically, it's only at 20 degrees or something like that. And 20 degrees is not actually too hot for my base. I would be a very happy duplicate if I was living in 20 degrees the entire time. So I, I think that's something that we can live with here. So I was just exploring uh, via the medium of the camera to have a look around and see what looks like the most promising area to go exploring. And I reckon to the bottom right of my base, it's probably the one to go for. Not only does it give us a full map exploration of kind of the bottom area, that's not quite true. There's a middle bit that we don't explore, but the, of the bottom area before we get to the uh, oil and the hot stuff. Uh, it also has a cold biome and some buildings down there. So it just felt like a good way to start digging. And thankfully, with the uh, high level diggers that we have, excavation of a corridor takes literal seconds, which is amazing because I would like to get down there with as many people as quick as possible. Now, of course, we need to make sure that we cap it all with tiles and stuff to make sure that none of the slime starts producing slime lung in my base. There is, of course, a whole bunch of other stuff I could do to tidy that place up a lot more. But I think what I'm going to do first is make sure that all the high priority jobs are done over here because I want to make sure that this oil processing gets done before we finish this episode. Because far too often now I've kind of had a, a long-term job that doesn't actually finish within an episode. And I reckon getting some fluids pumping through this machine is not going to be overly difficult. So as I say, this machine, the oil processor, does leak a little bit of natural gas just off into the uh, outside environment. So we're going to set up a filter here. The gas that is not natural gas, we're just going to spew out into the corridor. We don't really care about that. At some point, I should probably do some, like, a waste 
gas disposal system somewhere where we like filter through all the gases and put them all in different separate places but yes the uh, waste gas is going in there and then any natural gas that gets produced we will filter off and send up into the uh, generator because you know it's natural gas we can burn it get ourselves a whole bunch of power off of that should be beautiful something that i've been setting up in the background whilst i've been talking is to replace the bottom layer of the cold water tank with obsidian at the moment it's sedimentary rock and i thought the fact that it was slow to be thermally reactive might be a good idea to like kind of hold in and be a cold sink if you will so we could have a whole lot of cold in there and then dissipate that into the water but that's unfortunately not working out so i'm replacing it with obsidian to make more of a, a clear through system so we can get it affected from outside of the water tank as powerfully as quickly and as uh efficiently as possible uh, as you can see there they are all running around and putting down the obsidian now it's looking pretty good i'm a little bit worried about the tile on the right hand side you can see uh, there is one tile to be changed there if i had been smart and thought ahead i could have actually put a tile on the outside to save the water that's just about to get dropped mad frank going up to uh, go and dig out in fact zed tech actually did it mad frank was just on the uh just on the disinfect there but zed tech is starting to uh, reveal something that kind of kind of changes all my plans or in fact it doesn't because i end up just ignoring it because of how much of a, a different mindset i've got to have to to use it but it is the anti-entropy anti-thermal device thing you pump our hydrogen into it hydrogen up to any temperature and it will take a certain amount of temperature off of it and give you some colder hydrogen back and i could just build like a hydrogen radiator inside the cold water tank and then pump it up there can bring some cold hydrogen back run it through the water get like super chilled water building a radiator and stuff like that yeah it's a, it's a bit of a different process from what i'm doing now so i might end up using it at some point but right now i'm off exploring for for wheeze warts it's what, it's what i'm actually doing so it's what i'm actually going to do <laughs> I spent the night scouting around the outside of my visible area looking for any more geysers or anything like that that I can spot and I spot this pool of polluted water that I've kind of been ignoring for a little while here. Uh, it's got a Pichu or whatever it is those things are there. Paku, Pichu? I can't, I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head because I don't use them very often. As far as I'm aware they're only a source of meat yet still I feel sad about like just randomly killing them so progress can roll forwards. So I try and set up a little bit of a tank uh, it would just be nice to have somewhere where people where we could keep a small aquarium. I, I think that would be nice. Brum manages to go and get himself stuck in the process of that. I should have known really should have known we had to break him out and build a new area there is a lot of hydrogen starting to collect at the top of my base whilst i don't do this in this episode i really do need to start sorting out some sort of air filtration uh, system at the top of my of my base uh, like like i was talking about with the waste gas system where we could just filter it all off and take the uh, the gases that we want out of the line we could probably do that with the gases at the top as well filter them off into like hydrogen natural gas carbon dioxide etc but from carbon dioxide I would blatantly just dump on top of to a carbon scrubber and turn it into polluted water and process the water through my massive water processing system that is 100% reliable and effective. Honestly. <laughs> One of the other beautiful side effects that would actually come from filtering off all this hydrogen would be I would have a whole bunch of hydrogen to deal with. And I'm not sure if you're aware that hydrogen is actually one of the most thermally conductive materials in the game. If you have something sat in an atmosphere of hydrogen, it will shed its heat to that atmosphere exceedingly quickly. And also, you know, that thermoentropy cheaty device at the top also runs on hydrogen. So but I should really get around to sorting that out but of course before we can do any of that night time will fall upon us again and also much more interesting trying to get this passive system working that i've been talking about trying to get down and get those old weasel warts. that would be so good i spent a lot of time looking at the snow over the top of my warm uh, my my water tank not warm water tank just my normal water tank um the main reason being is it's actually an entire like 20 tons of snow it is a great big a lump of stuff and it's actually taking a very long time to chill out uh, well not to chill out to uh, return to thermal equilibrium thaw out into water and drop down into the tank i'm super not sure if there is a way of splitting down uh, big stacks into smaller tax stacks to try and like reduce the thermal load on it I, i'm not really not sure and even if there was i'm fairly sure if we then dropped a small stack on top of a small stack they would like clump together into a giant stack thus increasing the the mass of a single object unfortunately the 
the higher the mass of a single object, the longer it takes for the temperature of the area to take effect. Because obviously you've got like more stuff to dump temperature into. So uh, I, I really, what I actually need is a whole line of those storage compactors that we can put little bits of snow into individually. Yeah, I think that would work out pretty well. Unfortunately, don't actually have that going at the moment. So we've been watching our duplicates in the background go through and clean the cold water tank out there. It's, it's a great plan. It's going to keep everything nice and tidy for us. And it also just looks a little bit better. One thing that I do quite dislike is just having a whole bunch of stuff detritus in the bottom of my water tanks it, it happens all the time but uh that's that that's a thing uh the cold water tank nice and easy to go fix the whole water tanks not so much i will uh scold duplicates quite badly if i try and send them in there so i try not to do that i'm not sure if you guys noticed underneath the uh swamp biome that we were digging out down below there actually appears to be another cold biome which is amazing mad frank had a few random injuries there no idea where he even got them from i assume from analyzing the scolding hot natural gas vents uh, so we just go ahead and put him into the med bay get people looking after him with the discovery of the coal biome down below I'm like right well this obviously has to become a slightly more major place I thought I was just working towards that door on the right but no now we have more things to worry about so I'm going to put a bunch of deodorizers up there to clear the oxygen out as I was planning to do anyway but it now became much more of a priority and dropping the ladder down so that we can uh, get some digging going across and the reason I decided down here was uh, mainly because I didn't want any of the water dropping in. Uh, you can see there's quite a few caverns up there that are full of polluted water. Uh, in fact, I'm going to keep that middle bit there as a nice little puffed holding area. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do with the puffs, but at some point we're going to combine puffs and morbs together to equal infinite slime. Somehow, you know, the, the morb produces polluted oxygen, the puff turns that polluted oxygen into slime, and then somehow we get the duplicants in there to remove the slime we could probably put morbs down below then some mesh tile and then you have the uh, puffed up top with some way of the slime dropping down and then you duplicants can walk in on the mesh tile yeah that sounds like a, a plan instantly came up with in here it's probably something i've come up with before thinking about it but there we go having another quick look at the water the uh, obsidian changing has uh, definitely helped the temperature has started to flee from the area into the local environment and because it's a cold biome it is a returning to its natural cold equilibrium uh, the wheeze warts are definitely helping out there and talking of wee warts i want zed tech to get down there and get through but at the time we've got St uh, sir steve opening the doors so uh, looking inside those lockers also a priority i believe all we get from there are a selection of vests we've either got the breezy or like the woolly vests I, I can't remember exactly what they're called but you guys know what they do they either make you a little cold so you can deal with the hot biomes or make you a little warm so you can deal with the cold biomes the problem with them though is that i never figure out a way of just restricting a dupe to a cold biome now obviously i can think of a way even just with these doors here you could probably restrict a duplicate but that would then mean that i would need to build them a bedroom try and figure out how food gets to them and stuff like that. It's major, mainly the food. That's actually quite a big issue about how, um, about separating off uh, a base from the main base is how do you get the food out there? Do you now need an entire separate farm and duplicates and cooking and stuff like that just just for one person to run around in the cold? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how that works. Anyway, we're coming back to uh, the oil processing here so that we can run the natural gas vent into the tubes. You can see that I didn't put, uh, I put them into their own little junction so that it splits off uh, in a fair manner. Uh, the the piping, it's it's a simple set of rules, but obviously, as always, when you start combining lots of simple rules together, you end up with quite a complex system to try and uh, figure out. Uh, it should be just a 50-50 split, but you know, we've got things coming in from either the way and uh, yeah it all gets uh, a little difficult to predict difficult not impossible so we found a neuralizer oh yes indeed for those of you that are not aware the neuralizer is an item that you can go and make your duplicates sit inside and they, they pick up a special power of some description uh it's like one of the the traits that you get uh on the selection screen on the uh the printer i'm yet to have a bad thing fall out of the neuralizer a bad trait uh normally it's good things like uh dive alive or quick learner or uh, whatever the one that is increases your athletics it's normally stuff like that as opposed to things like narcolepsy and loud breather and, and things uh, so I'm hoping that we're only going to have a good good time with this neuralizer and we'll see in Captain Subs well that was, that was Brum but Captain Subs was there for a little while given that he is top patron
and I should imagine that he's going to be the guy that gets all the special privileges as and when they arrive, including the Neuralizer. Now, everybody else, you can all get involved on the uh, Weasel what's there, but I did see the Neutronium there, and I also heard the noise of another geyser. Now, I'm not exactly sure what geyser it is down there, but you, I do know that I do want to go and find out. Oh, yes, indeed. All the other guys running around and tidying up the snow. I'm actually kind of happy with this because obviously most of the snow gets put into the uh, storage compactor above my water supply. This means we're getting more water. I mean, I suppose technically all the ice biomes are just giant water supplies. Hello, we've got a load of water going on up there and I'm not sure why. It could be any reason. My top theory is that someone was carrying some snow across and it got too warm. That, that could definitely be the case there. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed just in that small a little screen that I showed you there that there is something a little bit weird going on with the top top hot water uh, tank. The, uh, the amount of gas has obviously compressed down into the top tiles at the top. This is something that happens fairly often. I'm sure you have seen this a few times. Uh, and is starting to allow the water to overpressurize because there is a, an air gap that has managed to trap itself over the top of the uh, water vent that lets the water into the, into the tank and it's not like reaching its max pressure because there's only so much gas in there and we're not letting any more gas in there but the water down below is still pushing up quite a lot and just for space reasons the fact that you only get one type of gas slash water per tile means that that's just gonna carry on like that could be problems in the future mm, yes indeed so i believe at this point i've actually um no, um nominated, sorry, I don't know why that word escaped me there, nominated subs for the Neuralizer, but we've been watching him for a little while ago, a, a little while now, and he's just been going around doing his normal jobs, which to me screams that maybe we've got ourselves just a little bit of a priority issue. I also noticed that that pump was running down in the uh, oil room there, and uh, I, we don't really need it running quite yet because obviously the, the oil refinery is not working. Alright, so with the priority issues for Captain Subs. I've, go, I've gone through and I've just turned everything off for it. I was just like, no more priorities for you. Everything in the middle. And what you know, it seems to have worked. Hypothesis tested and confirmed. I'm going to go with that. Don't worry, that face, it might have looked bad, but he went ahead and got himself the Diver's Lungs trait, which is pretty good, actually, because that means he can hold his breath in a, 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 a adverse environment much longer than all the other dupes. And as he's one of the people that we send out for all the jobs like that, it's great. Okay, so this is the point where I'm like, all right, fair enough, 22 degrees, good enough. Let's just pump that water out. 23, too much, 22, it's fine. Uh, it is because I am aware of what's going. Now, you can see this one is over and pressurized but the other one just keeps on filling and here you can see the problem i didn't i didn't hover over it for anywhere near enough i was also just making sure that the uh pressure switches were thrown in the right manner so that when we start pumping we aren't uh left with a horrific mess where they both are trying to pump into both uh tanks as we're trying to pull out of the other one that's, uh, that, that was the plan anyway, and we'll uh, talk about what actually happens when it actually happens. So it's still looking quite warm in there, and I'm not that bothered by it. And I'm wondering what to do with some of the water that is uh, stuck down below. But with all the water emptying out, I've decided that maybe it's fine to start moving on to other projects. Most particular, I really want to get down to this gas geyser. and trying to think about how to get down there. I, get, I don't know if it's a gas geyser. It, it could be any number of geysers out there. And in fact, there have been so many more geysers introduced since I started playing that I don't actually know all the ones that it could be and I'm hoping I've got my fingers super crossed that is a steam geyser ideally a, a cool steam geyser which only outputs 100 degrees as opposed to the hot steam geyser which is like 500 degrees or something I don't know uh, so that's uh yeah I'm really hoping for the cool one that that would be great but what do you know another night comes down and they haven't dug everywhere I want them to go so I'm now thinking about how to get down to that oil patch below and where I want to put the pump to move it into the oil refinery. Obviously I want to have the pump down as low as possible so we can get as much of the liquid out of the area as possible but that liquid is also 80 odd degrees so we don't want the liquid falling on our duplicates while they're trying to sort that particular problem out. I think it all seems a fairly self-explanatory and self-evident once I've explained all the things so I suppose that makes it not self-explanatory but self-evident once all the things have been explained to you. There's two more Weezwarts down in the coal biome that I'm after at which point I 
will decide that this part of coal biome is uh, dealt with, at least in far as resources are dealt with. But that geyser, that geyser still uh, intrigues me. And here comes Zetek to do the actual exploratory digging. He appears to be digging just the lower ones. That is because I have set the priorities up to make that more of a more of a thing that happens. All right, uh, Zetek walking away because uh, he can't do the walls until people have already delivered the items for them to be built. It turns out. So I decide to get rid of the door because who needs a door anyway? And we're going to let Zed dig in there. And what have we got? It's a carbon dioxide vent. That's actually really bad. I, we've, got to, we've got to stop this right now. It's not really bad, but I still want my Egyptians to come down here and explore. And we haven't really done much of that. And if this whole place fills up with carbon dioxide, we're probably going to have a bit of a bad way. Also, I don't know what temperature it comes out at. And it could just melt this entire biome. And then we'll just end up with a very, 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 very wet place to go and explore. So, I, I no. We're going to try and enclose it as quick as possible so that it can like just be its own little self-contained mess rather than a mess that spills out everywhere. I gave a quick bit of an idea to uh, trying to figure out whether we could get another pitch pump in there. I decided that no, that is not the way, but also took off half the doors that were over the top of the water, water tank and put in a more exosuit uh, checkpoints there because I do actually want to end up having the exosuit be a thing that happens on the way out to the left of the base because that's where you go down and start going towards all the hot stuff so I think that will be a good thing there. I also noticed that in the water tank we're starting to get a bit of a carbon dioxide problem so I decided it's probably a good idea to put some uh, air vents in the side so that, yeah they are air vents aren't they the tiles in the side so that we can uh, let all that out and just have nice clean water one thing i want you to listen out for is when we come past this carbon dioxide vent uh, i've got a feeling that the sound file they used is just like an engine trying to turn over no, we can't hear it at the moment. That's, that's a little bit of a shame. But just listen out in the background. The carbon dioxide vent definitely makes some weird noise. When you're listening to it in normal speed, it's like this real gravelly low, like geological type sound. But you speed it up and it suddenly just sounds like a truck trying to turn over, which uh, I find quite interesting. So I start playing around with this pump idea. I remember, as I was saying, I really don't want to be able to like drop this oil on top of my duplicate's head. So I think the best way is to go out and around and then we can have this sort of like wall set Separating that we can dig out as and when we need to dig out that wall. So I think it's probably about time to start shuffling some people around in jobs. It's mainly just to make sure that they we get a nice well-rounded group of individuals. Anyone that's got uh, any sort of secondary tier, now is the time to go, a uh, secondary favourite, sorry. Now is the time to go and assign them to that because most of them have made their way up to the master position in the jobs that is of their chosen traits. So that's pretty cool. It also means that we can get some more people on the digging rotation and digging is is what a lot of the job is all about right now. Uh, trying to uh, pump people up, uh, particularly in the minor trait, so that we can start taking out more abyssalite and granite and stuff like that. And we're not just waiting on Zedtech all the time. And whilst it's nice to have a designated digger, sometimes the designated digger is on the other side of the base digging some other designated stuff. So it's, it's just nice to have more than one, which may mean that we're kind of kind of come up to the next wave of uh, immigrants if you will into the base but we will have to definitely do a lot more with our farming and the range of food i mean these are things that need to be addressed anyway so it's probably not too bad one of the other things that i'm thinking about with the situation right in front of us here is the fact that when we dig through to the left we are going to have a gap going through to the cold biome and whilst that's not terrible it is actually like really hot on this side and it's really cold on that side so i think i'd like to try and separate them so we slammed down a couple of insulated tiles there just to, you know, keep the area pristine or whatever that word means. You know? <laughs> it's the uh, same sort of argument as like with the solar system, right? Yeah, uh, everything's going to have got mixed anyway, but let's let's make ourselves feel better by not making the things that we can see ourselves do do uh, do the mixing. Yeah, yeah, that that's how it works, right? As long as we feel like it's not our fault, then it's all good, yeah? All right, well, so we're throwing up the walls, and as you can see, things are already starting to melt just, like, instantly. So we got problems with that. Sour gas! It's a new gas. I've never seen it before. It turns out it's what happens when you warm up methane too far, and it, like, just evaporates into the air. I have literally never seen it before. It's a, a lovely shape 
shade of sort of reddish purple. I, I feel like we could do with it just for a little bit of uh, decoration around. All right, so we're following Zedtech because he is the diggy man and I want some digging to be done. And thankfully, with this angle, we also get to see people are building stuff up above. That, uh, Zed comes down and does all the digging and then all the other guys come down and start placing the items. But also, you might know that we're starting to get a little bit of oil in this freshly dug hole. Now, I don't know about you, but that slightly makes me worry. Um, obviously, there's some sort of weak material in the wall. Uh, but as long as we get all this made, it should be fine, right? As long as we can get the pump done, we'll just let it start dripping in and then everything should work out in the end. Ruby uh, complaining a little bit about the temperature there. I suppose I can understand why they're saying that. The uh, the oil isn't exactly the most light of materials. And, oh, the, the, the thing is broken and the, the, the oil level is rising. Quick, maybe I can, like, dig a hole for it, some sort of trap. No, that doesn't seem to be working. And now Zed's taking some damage. Maybe I can get, like, put a wall up. If I could put a wall up in the way, that would also work out. Oh, red alert has been fired because everybody's trying to go to sleep, but we have got big problems down below. I really just want that taken out, but I've got a feeling that now there is a whole bunch of oil across there that maybe everything is lost and people can't actually go in. The Jeep can't, sorry, can't go in and, uh, and do that. Well, there's another gas geyser, an oil geyser or something down below, but i got to say, with this now problem that has overcome me, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. Well, we're going to try and figure out what to do about that. we got oil overwashing everything. Ah, but I will see you then when we're going to deal with that. Bye!